Welcome to Better Preparedness. This is a minimalist kit that you can build so that you, if you have the chance to go scuba diving, you need kind of have the essentials with you. I've been scuba diving for about 14 years. I'd love to say I get out there all the time, but it really kind of works out about every six to 18 months you know, that I'll get a chance to go scuba diving. And if you're from Canada, a lot of your scuba diving in Canada is going to be ridiculously cold. So for me, it's if I've been traveling, we're often we've been living abroad, so sometimes that opens up opportunities or we'll go somewhere and suddenly, hey, there's a chance to go scuba diving. But if you didn't have some, some of your kit with you, well then you can't. Quite often where I've been diving, which is a much, much of the time it's been on the African coast, and you'll either be shore entry, so you'll be putting on your gear and so you'll be driven, or maybe there's a dive shop and there's some good sites right there. But quite often it's been kind of zodiac style craft where there's really nowhere to put stuff and you're often in dealing with big waves and a lot of water so you don't want things that can get damaged with you or get lost and if the boat ever gets flipped because if you do a shore launch like i did yesterday here down near durban aliwal shoal has some absolutely amazing diving but you have to get over the breakers and if things were to go horribly wrong and you flip the boat now i've heard of that not there but in other places where a boat has actually been flipped by these big swells trying to get over the breakers, well, the whole thing can go. And you don't want to have anything in that boat that's not tied down and, well, waterproof it if it needs to be. So let's go through some of the key things that you absolutely need to have. Well, you need to have your license. This is just a card with your photo and your dive num diver number on it. And this allows you to show dive shop that you, you have your your certification for whatever diving you want to do. Your dive log, this is helpful as well to show when your last dive was. If you haven't gone diving, for usually for about six months, you have to do just a refresher, maybe in the pool, in the water. But if you don't have your dive book with you, they may say, well, we don't know when your last dive was. So you'll have to do the refresher, even if you didn't really need to do the refresher. In my little baggie, I have dive planner, just some good reminders, especially if you haven't been diving for a little while, you can look up some of your dive times and dive intervals again. And there's also the recreational dive planner. This allows you to check, especially if you're doing multiple dives, uh, how much surface time you need to have in between. <laughs> this is just a small thing. But in recent years, I've tended to get a bit more seasick than I used to. And so having a few gravel tablets in this little baggie, trust me, it pays off. I forgot to take any of this before I was diving in Tofu in Mozambique and we had these huge swells and i had three sessions of throwing up so if you can spare yourself by having you know a bit of anti motion sickness uh, medication with you well worth it trust me yesterday somebody else was doing the chucking not me feeding the fish a little dry bag really useful to have keep any valuables dry one of i think the most underrated pieces of safety equipment i call this an emergency sausage if you ever got separated from the dive group, from the dive boat, and you come back up to the surface as agreed with the, the dive instructor, you have this which creates a big air shaft above you. You inflate this and then it's visible from quite a distance away. And I highly, highly recommend you have one of these, maybe even have a second one as a reserve, because especially because I rent gear, this goes into the pocket of the BCD and if I forget it in there, that's a bummer. They're not that expensive, but if you don't have a replacement one, that sucks. What I'd like to do with this one is attach a whistle to it, a marine grade whistle. Put a little, uh, maybe a little zip tie here and attach it so that I also have a whistle for you know, vocal signaling because sound can travel a bit, not your voice, but a whistle could be enough to hopefully get someone's attention if you're ever in distress on the surface. Highly recommend these. Make sure you make a list of the things you like to pack. So the last minute you can add a few things into your kit as you go. Sun cream, lip balm. I really like wrist IDs. Again, if you're on, out on the boat quite often, you have no identification with you. If something ever horrible goes wrong, I have one of these wrist IDs, sport camera, I use this vintage GoPro Hero 2 that I found years ago. Came off of somebody's kayak, I think, but there's nothing, in, nothing I could use to find the, the owner. But I've been using this GoPro. Hey, uh, the makers of GoPro, if you have any extra GoPro Hero 7 Black, 
cameras, I would love to try one. I also have this strap so you can cinch it down onto your wrist so you don't lose it when you're diving and stuff and you're entering. Uh, it can be easy to lose this stuff. You don't really want a floater on this because if you're down and scuba diving, you don't want to be fighting this camera trying to always float up to the surface. Again, that's just my choice. If you want, you can bring your own mask. Often, if I've really been unsure or not sure I would dive, like on this trip, I wasn't even sure if I could, but yesterday I went and had a fantastic dive. And so I didn't have a mask with me. Just make sure you test out the ones in the shop and uh, make sure they fit your face. A carabiner, always good to have a little carabiner to attach whatever bag you have and whatever things you take on the boat attach it to the boat itself that way you can't lose it i don't have a diver alert network card that's one of these the dan cards as they're called that's one of these things in case things ever go wrong from a medical perspective if you're into diving a fair bit you'll probably know about that and a photocopy of your id in a waterproof baggie Ziploc baggies, you know, these things are always useful. This is kind of my go-to bag. So a lot of just about everything I have, it sounds like a fair bit, but all that fits into this. So this is what stays at home. And I always have this stuff with me. I have this, I bought this at a used bookshop last year and I've been using it so much. So if you're in a location, buy the book. This is a book, no batteries required. And the thing is, is that whenever I call a dive shop or I, I look into something along the garden route, for example, and they tell me, okay, we're going to do the Groot Bank dive. Well, I can look up exactly what that dive is and kind of, I can help just, you know, that can help maybe decide, okay, am I going to dive on the Tuesday or the Wednesday? If they tell me there are different dives planned for different things. And sometimes you can kind of read the fact that maybe it's just a really simple, not that in interesting dive and you can ask them about something else that they have uh, on option for dive. So if you're in a location a fair bit, buy the dive book. These things are so useful, not just the internet. This goes into so much more depth. Highly recommend it. And things like your sunglasses, I highly recommend. What's my wish list? Well, I wish I could add, if I had sort of a fair bit more money, I would definitely like to have my own dive watch. Again, I don't dive very often, so I'm usually relying on the dive, the depth gauge and so on of the, of the dive master or the instructor. So dive watch would be really nice. A newer GoPro, this Hero 2 is kind of getting old and the image quality is just nothing compared to these newer GoPros. A mini padlock is a good thing to have. So if you have a place at the dive shop where you can lock some of your gear, a padlock is gonna be helpful. I also recommend you get a wash bag in a sense, after the dive, okay, this, this has my mini bottle of sun cream, um, really useful. And on this one, in this one, this is, you know, you get these free things all the time. So these mini uh, quick dry towels that you can wring out and reuse, nice to have. So for some reason I have two in here, but I guess always useful to have, to have two bar of soap. And you could have some shampoo in here as well. And make sure you do have your sun shirt and your bathing suit. If you have like a speedo style bathing suit that you use for underneath the wet suits, well then it's nice to have, like maybe I, I don't really wear speedos too often when I'm just swimming. So usually I just keep the speedo style swimsuit and one of these quick dry sun shirts in this bag. And that way it's all, wet, it's all together. And all of my, all of the rest of this gear, to be honest, it all fits into here. So I just have my little scuba baggie. I'd like to hear from you though. What, what kits, what kit items do you have? Do you have a sort of really basic scuba kit that you bring with you when you go diving? Well, share in the comment section below. If you're new to the channel, well, click that subscribe button, click the little bell icon so you get notified whenever there's a new video material from Better Preparedness out here. Below, you'll find the link to the betterpreparedness.com website. Check it out, tons of great information and videos on there. And this YouTube channel is all about active living and, well, doing things more safely. It's not about being paranoid about, you know, things happening. Well, this is trying to make it be more proactive, take the risks, re identify some of the risks uh, in things and deal with them and hopefully make that a lot safer. Thanks for watching. Better preparedness.